Hello guys and welcome. It's uh, another old commentary video. This is the last Sizonet video I edited and it's about ice coring and you'll see what that is in the video but basically ice coring is just when you drill a hole in the ice to see how thick the ice is. So this video was part of that Barrow joint class be between sea ice students and film students. The ice researcher you see is Hayao Aiken. You'll also see some archival footage, I believe, and that footage was from the UAF Rasmussen Library. I guess that's all I have to say. Here's the video. Gathering information for all mankind about the earth and the sky and the oceans. They study the ice. Here, I mean, there's almost like you know, there's there's stuff here. So maybe you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a piece of a, a of a little you know, not a pressure ridge, but a raft or something. So you might want to go around and see whether you can find a spot that's completely smooth and level. Because if you drill in here, you might find that there's deformed ice all the way down to half of the ice thickness. So I would say, you know, it's tough to tell, but one group can just pick up snow. You know, some of this stuff may be snow drift, but some of it certainly here might have a core of, of, you know, you can see, I mean, there's already more solid ice here. You cut a square like so, you lift that out, right? And now you have a nice wall cross section of the snow. And as you clear this away, you can already tell, well, okay, there, this here actually seems to be fairly square, right, and fairly level. You do the same thing again here. And I admit, I mean, this is not a great shovel, actually, for what you're trying to do here. But uh, do the same thing here. I, uh, I sort of have a feeling that this area here might be quite nice. So why don't you... See whether you can get yourself set up there. 16. 15 and half. 14 and half. So what do you need for drilling an ice core? You need your core barrel. Uh, this one here is fiberglass um, and has a, uh, uh, a top coupling here that you simply push in once it's aligned. And then we're using the safety disc here if we're drilling with an electric drill because the, uh, um, the top here might actually come sliding out of the drill when we yank it up. And then this disc here is gonna prevent the whole assembly from dropping into the hole. And then um, we're gonna have to connect our actual electric drill, which is going to fit on top of this connector here. And yeah, if you can hold that, that's great, thanks. And then we'll just have to tighten this very well. So you wanna be sure that you um, tighten this on all three sides. All right, there we are. So now you're basically ready to go and actually start drilling the core. If, if you operate such an electric drill with an ice core, you, you really have to watch out for a few safety issues. The first one, of course, is you always want to look where's your plug, right? You don't want to have that lying around in water. Now, the nice thing is, what's, what's that yellow and black GFI. box? GFI, and that is a... Ground frequency Freak interruptor. Ground fault. Oh. Ground fault interruptor. <laughs> so if you accidentally, if you if you drop this into a pool of water, that's 
conducting into the seawater, it's as if you were on ground and you're draining large currents in there, this thing is automatically going to shut off. So you can't really electrocute yourself with that on there. Um, so that's one key concern. Always make sure that your uh, plugs are clean, free of water or snow. The other issue, of course, is this is a very powerful drill. And so you want to be very careful that you always hold the drill. I mean, this thing is almost like a shotgun, right? You never put your finger on the trigger unless you're sure that you want to drill. Um, and when you start drilling, you want to make sure that you have the drill very firmly and secure in both of your hands. Um, one of the common mistakes is that people, they, they hold this, you know, and then they're looking at this here and they're coming up and they're hitting oh. this oh. thing accidentally oh. while they're loosely holding the drill. The drill starts to spin and, you know, you can sprain or, or, or even break your wrist. I personally prefer not even holding any part of the drill other than the electric drill with both hands, just one person when you get going. And then once you've drilled a bit so that the drill has sort of settled or eased into its little hole, you want to make sure that the drill is exactly vertical, right? So you can have to look at that from different directions and then make sure that as you continue drilling, once it's found that perpendicular, you know, nicely aligned hole, it's just going to keep on going but you don't want it at an angle. But once it keeps on going, then really just one person can drill on their own. And occasionally you have to lift up the drill to remove the shavings and the, and the drill cuttings from the hole. And then somebody else might use their boots or even if you have uh, the rubber gloves, you can move that out of the way as long as you don't get snagged. Um, and then you just keep on going until you know, you're know your three quarters or maybe five, six, five, six or so uh, the way through with the core barrel, and then you stop and take out the core. Okay, that's better. So this here, notice how, you know, just from the drilling, there's a bit of slush in here. That's actually not ice. So we can, you know, we can just take that out. Whereas this here is solid ice. Goes in here. So this is the core in its entirety. And it's one meters and 43 long. So that was minus 1.5 at 40. Next one is at 50 centimeters. We're measuring temperature in the ice now by drilling a hole, inserting a thermometer. Minus 2.0 at 70. Minus 2.2 at 80, and the last one is at 90. <clears throat> and normally, what we have on top of the ice is a uh, is a half is a sleeve with holes in it that we drill through to shade and insulate the ice core. Today, we're not using that, um, and so we're putting the box in here so that we're shading the thermometer so that the thermometer doesn't heat up by the sun. So now I'm just pre-marking the core at five centimeter intervals. Okay.
Okay, so it looks like we have enough bags here. Um, and there's also some markers there, so you can mark those either out on the ice or here. And then there's one other thing we're going to measure on the ice, right? Well, yeah, first of all, with the core, yeah, the core pieces, yeah, the mass of, of the pieces. So we've got digital balances here, too, actually. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, a caliper here for measuring the exact dimensions of the of the core sections. You might want to five clean nine, off the slush, right? If you measure density, five, then that nine, three, slush. Nine, three. Okay. And yeah, actually, the polarizing sheet you can put aside. Uh, for now, we'll, we'll use those later. You guys can take that, and then there's there's a piece in there, but I'm just gonna grab this real quick here. Do you want to keep going down? No, no. Okay. I, I think this is good enough. Yeah. Does it get So when you take a okay, yeah, right. Good. That one. Okay, so just, just get the core pull out the back in there. Clear the colder. Yeah. So it's just warming up. Yeah. Where's so, the extension? Okay. This is another, this is 10. Um, but it's getting colder now, right? I mean, yeah. Um, so that clearly can't be, you know, what's the air temperature here? Well, I, I think I had it backwards because of the air. On one end 109, on the other 112. <laughs> About so. It's not a brine drain, it's not a yeah. little. Oh, really? That's where the temperature yeah. measurement was. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad we figured that out. Uh, 8.95. Okay. 1.79 for the mass. Link. You might want to five, nine, clean three. off the slush, right? If you measure density, five, then that nine, three. Slush. Okay. This was another video that was redone many times, so there wasn't a lot to talk about afterwards. Um, you will notice, compared to the last video you saw, this one had text, so you know who the scientist was, so that was good. Um, I can talk kind of about the coring. So you might be wondering how do they know that they got all the core. So when they push the, the coring machine down, it gets the core and if any of it falls out, because it's ice, it'll flow back up to the top 
and then they can reach in there with their hand and get it out. Um, this was the last Sizonet video. I when I was working on the project, I did three, and uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. There's other old videos I'll be posting. If you like watching these old videos from university and other projects I did, you can subscribe. If you have your own feedback about the video, you can post a comment, but I'll see you next time.